All right, good afternoon. My name is Dale George. And I'm a principal analytics consultant with Netuitive. And today we're going to be talking about things your monitoring software should be telling you, but probably isn't. And we're going to do that by looking at two different users and comparing their experiences. So first up, we have Bob. And Bob is very frustrated with his monitoring tools uh, because it seems like he spends all of his time either fighting fires or getting distracted by false alarms. In contrast to that, we have Jill. And Jill's monitoring tools reduce false alarms and allow her to be more proactive, um, the result of which is she and her computer systems are a lot happier. So what is her software telling her that Bob's isn't? There's a few important questions. What is normal? What is unusual but not bad? What is unusual and actually expected? What is the root cause of performance issues? And when will capacity be reached? So Bob has set up static thresholds on his servers to alarm when CPU utilization is too high. But there's a number of CPU-intensive batch jobs that run every night. And whenever they cross Bob's thresholds, they trigger false alarms that wake him up. So Bob increases the threshold to 85%. And the good news is he doesn't get the false alarms anymore. The bad news is that my graphics aren't showing up. <laughs> But the bad news is he doesn't get alarms when CPU spikes in the middle of the day, and then he has to deal with outages. Now, Jill, on the other hand, is not getting false alarms. Uh, she has a software with machine learning that figures out what's normal for her metrics, both historically as well as in the context of other related metrics. And then alarms can be generated um, that allow her to respond quickly. So Bob decides to improve his situation. He sets up software with machine learning and configures it to alarm when CPU usage is abnormal. But there are machines that have low CPU usage. And when they spike, quote unquote, to 2%, he gets false alarms. And Jill, in the meantime, is using intelligent policies. And these take the machine learning of what's normal, along with the results of multivariate analysis, and combine them with best practices in order to produce alarms that are both meaningful and actionable. Because CPU activity by itself is not necessarily enough to know that you have an issue. Multivariate analysis of CPU, however, in conjunction with things like run queue size and context switches per second, can give you a good indication of a CPU or a server that's running hot. Now, Bob is also an AWS user, and he wants to monitor the performance of his EBS disk volumes. So he starts monitoring for unusual increases in the disk queue length, which you can see in this graph here. But when he starts investigating one of the alarms, what he finds is that the increase in the queue length was really just due to an increase in traffic to the disk. And you can see in these graphs here, there's an increase in IOPS, and that's directly leading to an increase in the disk queue. And when he looks at it further, he finds that there was only a very small increase in latency. And that's not unexpected, given the increase in volume of traffic to the disk. So while the activity may have been unusual for this disk at this time of day, it's not necessarily a problem, and it was a false alarm. So Jill handles this situation through use of a computed metric called the queue length differential. This is comparing the actual queue length with the expected queue length. And that allows Jill to, tell the, to, to be able to know when the queue length is longer than what's actually expected. And she can then set up an intelligent policy that can differentiate between cases where usage is abnormal but expected and cases where it's both abnormal and problematic, and then only generate alarms in that latter case. So one day, Bob gets a call from a user that their application is slow. And Bob doesn't even know where to begin looking. He has a wall full of performance graphs and charts. And he's got all kinds of log files to sort through, from app servers to database servers, et cetera. Right? So Jill, on the other hand, is able to see a hierarchical view of each application's infrastructure. So she can very quickly drill down to where the hotspots are. She knows where she needs to focus her attention. And she can proactively fix problems before users call in to complain. And finally, Bob has alarms configured for when server, overall server utilization is too high. Unfortunately, by the time they trigger, it's too late, and performance has already begun to suffer. And Bob knows from his past experience that simply lowering the threshold is not going to be the solution. So Jill solves this problem with a capacity forecast policy. By applying analytics to the current trend in server utilization, this policy can forecast into the future and allow Jill to proactively address the capacity needs. So fortunately, Bob's a smart guy, and he invested in some new tools. And now, like Jill, he, is, uh, he avoids false alarms, and he's able to be more proactive, keeping his systems running and his users happy. Thank you.